Good afternoon. Uh, today we've decided to come to Takapuna to have a look around Takapuna, which, as those of you who know Auckland well will know, was one of the um, the great busy suburbs of Auckland. And I'm on Hurstmere Road today, very flash part of Takapuna. And we'll have a little look around here. I'll just put the sunnies on as usual. It's a very bright day. We had a lovely run of weather up here, lovely run of weather. But I just ran into my old mate um, Kevin Swass, his missus, uh, Hallie, Helen, absolute champion bird. And we're having a talk about Takapuna. And she was telling me how desperate times are over here. And, and I'm not surprised because I read in the paper the other day, those mad, um, I'm going to say, I can't use a B word, that's a swear word, we'll call them um, the drop kicks from Auckland Transport. They just spent, they've ripped the street up here and they've put in a, a one way thing with a whole lot of basalt rocks sitting around. I want to know where that basalt come from and where the procurement's office got that from. There's a little issue there at the procurement's office at council. There's a whole lot of slightly dodgy stuff going on that I need to know about. Nice piece of basalt though, having said that. But it just worries me when they have one supplier who keeps supplying all the same product every time. But I'm digressing a little bit. So back to the subject of interest. Today we're talking about Hurstmere Road, which used to be a great street. And um, Panuku's over here doing what they do, pulling things apart and destroying things. Uh, I notice there's a whole lot of uh, numerous shops for lease and there's very few pedestrians. So I'll just switch the... Um, actually, I don't, think I don't know how to switch the view without making a mistake here, so I'll just do a rotation. So looking behind me, um, we'll go around this way first, bit of sun there. There's a park behind me and that's, that's Hurstmere Road. Uh, there's a chap on a bike. That's quite some achievement. There's no pedestrians to speak of. Um, I'm not sure what the object of the exercise there was. Perhaps the object of the exercise was to drive people out of town. Uh, here's a nice piece of art. We have an owl in Takapuna, so hoot, hoot, hoot. We've got an owl, which is um, some comfort, I suppose, to some people. And here's a very nice park. You hear that noise in the background? That's a jackhammer. That's where Panuka's working over there. And you know that they're not working for council because council don't do any work. They put the tools down every opportunity they get. A sniffle or a cough and they'll take two weeks off work, hurt their feelings, they'll take a month off. So that's obviously private enterprise over there. But I'll just rotate around here and have a look at the park. Lovely sort of a park and lots of benches everywhere. But uh, one, lady, one lady only there. So a big park for one person and no one else. And while we're here, I just want to talk about cycling. Cycling seems to be the go-to thing for Auckland Transport at the moment when they're not wrecking roads and wrecking streets. And today we've got a, um, we've got Neelam up here. Who, who, I'll just turn around so you can see Neelam. She looks like a very pleasant person. Uh, Neelam has boldly announced, boldly announced that she likes riding into the city uh, from Takapuna. So presumably Neelam likes to go across the bridge. I don't know how she does that on a bike. She also has an electric bike. And she says that she's very impressed with the fresh air, the good exercise and the different perspective, which presumably includes the uh, 120 million tonne of dirty brown coal brought into Indonesia every year. And around the corner here we have Mr. Dean Wotherspoon. He also seems to be a very proud cyclist. And he's most proud of the fact that he gets a wave every morning when he crosses from Devonport and rides to Meadowbank, riding along the Iraqi Basin and views of the harbour. Uh, small problem there, Mr. Wotherspoon. The Iraqi Basin doesn't have a bike lane around it. It has a walking lane. So I'm not quite sure who wrote the script of the narrative for you there, but that's a little fib. And around the corner here again, we have Katie. Katie looks like a most pleasant individual, uh, has a rather nice bike. She looks like she's dressed up to go out on a Friday night on her bike. And Katie is delighted to share with us a wee gem that I also enjoy not being limited to a certain type of outfit when I ride. God forbid what she likes to wear, but I've definitely been seen riding and anything from active wear to dresses and stilettos, says Katie. That's quite some achievement, riding in dresses and stilettos on a push bike. So over here behind me, I'll just walk across the street and give you one more view of the, the wreckage and carnage of Hurstmere Road, which is now a one-lane street. Uh, a one-lane street with nothing in it, apart from empty shops, no customers, no pedestrians, no bikes, no cars. And right behind me, right on cue, there is Panuku. Panuku tearing up yet another street, a whole precinct, to make a park. A park which is delightfully, delightfully described as to collect, gather and assemble spring, water and life. We're building Anzac Square and inviting, no D, well no, it's an inviting, so it's an inviting and beautiful space that a community can come together to meet, relax, play and celebrate, which would all be very good if we had a community and any retail shops and any pedestrian traffic 
or any other sort of traffic where people could perhaps come and congregate and enjoy the city. What they neglect to mention in their glowing epistle, their self-praise, is that they have effectively driven everyone out of this city, out of this part of the city, this suburb. So one more time before I wrap this, I just put another perspective here, looking down Hurstmere, one of the great streets of the North Harbour. And you can blame Chris Darby, Chris Darby and little Phil, Richard Hills. They are your two councillors here, Darby and Hills. Along with Pippa Coon, have you ever seen three people who have spent so much money on behalf of so many people and achieved so little? They would have to be the three degraders of the current Orchard Auckland Council Group. On that note, I'll sign off. Leo the Mayor, for God's sake, make me Mayor, will you please? Please make me Mayor. I've got to sort this out. This is a disaster. This is the evisceration of an entire suburb. And on that note, over and out, Leo the Mayor, talk tomorrow. Take care out there. Bye now.